everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How's everybody? Happy Thursday. And we thank God for some warmer weather, right? Everybody doing good? Good to see you. You, you, and you. And um, we thank God that I can feel spring in the air. Um, so if you haven't been outside, go outside, take a deep breath, and just thank God for life and for the ability to breathe. No wonder David said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Well, um, some notices and information. We are delighted to learn that um, the numbers are plummeting as it relates to the Omicron um, variant and virus and transmission. So things are getting so much better. We thank God for that. It would appear that um, very, very soon we'll be able to, um, how do I say, reconsider the whole mass mandate piece and get back to some sense of normalcy. But we're going to continue to follow the science and the data. We're going to continue to be as safe as we can, follow social distancing, wear our masks, and do the things. But we're glad that things seem to be um, moving in the right direction. So we give God praise for that. I want to thank those of you who joined us for Bible study on Wednesday. We had a wonderful Bible study on last night. I want to thank Sister Grace Gordon, who was our facilitator and did a fabulous job on yesterday evening. So we're grateful for that. And um, I want you to please um, join us for our worship experience on Sunday. Um, please join us for our worship experience. On Sunday, we will celebrate baptism. We have a young man, well, not that young, but mature man who's given his life to the Lord and is going to be baptized. And we also have a young man who's going to receive the right hand of fellowship. So we want to do that. And then we'll celebrate the Holy Communion because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus said at that last supper, as he was getting ready to die for your sins and my sins, and the word reminds us that greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus at that last supper said, this do in remembrance of me. As often as you do it, you do show forth my death and my dying till I shall come again. So I hope that you'll come and join us for our worship experience. And Pastor will be preaching, and the Lord has given me a word. I'm going to talk about the fact that a great door of opportunity is open to you and me. God has a great door of opportunity is open, and there are many adversaries. But with God on our side, we'll be able to press through and go forward because he has begun a good work in us, we'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, let me go ahead and greet some of you that have come on. Won't you come on? Come on, you know, we, we were trying to start closer to noon as possible. So good to see you, Minister Valerie Ellis, my friend Patricia, Patricia Franklin, Richard Fagan, good to see you, good to see you. There are others of you on to put something in the chat so I know you're there. Um, Brother Richard Fagan, thank you. Good to see you. Sister Ann Hamid. Okay, some of you are coming on now. Come on. There's my friend Rich Reginald Sprawl, who is in um, Texas, how things in Texas. Uh, Mary Lawrence is in North Carolina. Good to see you. That's one of the wonderful things about this technology. It allows us to be in touch with our friends who are not even here in the city. And that's a good thing. How are you? Um, Mrs. Thornton just jumped on. Sister Thelma Phillips, how are you? How is everybody? All right, there's my sister Brenda. Good, good, good. All right, you guys, you know, um, I'm going to be endeavoring to get on as close to noon as possible. So just be near your device, whatever device, whether it's your iPhone or your tablet or your um, laptop. Try to be close to it by noon. I'm going to try to be on and then be off by 12, 15. How's that? All right. We're going to try that. We'll see. Sometimes things do come up and that's life. All right. Let's get to the word. We're talking about love. We're talking about love. We're out of Ephesians, talking from Ephesians. Um, and yesterday we completed Ephesians chapter one. And we talked about how Paul is just so delighted with this church and he gives God thanks and he asks God that God would grant this church wisdom and revelation 
so that we might know him better. He concludes by reminding us that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Not only is he the head of the church, but he's the head of the body. He's the head of us. He's the head of everything. Because the word reminds us that in all things, he might have the preeminence. And then we, now we're in Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to unpack verses 1 through 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and we're looking um, and studying today from the New International Version of the Bible. Paul reminds us, he says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Paul does something very interesting here. He gives us a description of Satan and how he moves and acts. He says that we were dead in our transgressions and sins because of Satan. And we followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. In other words, Satan moves as a spirit. They're demonic spirits that are at work in the world the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And so when we are disobedient to the will of God, it is because we have allowed the demonic spirit to overpower the Holy Spirit that is in us. And so we become disobedient. He says, all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. In other words, we had a sin nature. And because we were sinful and because we followed the prince of the air, who is a demonic spirit, we deserve to die. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Ah, but you know, we're talking about love. Watch this. I love this conjunctive word. He says, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. Here's a conjunctive word, but, uh, somebody say, but, verse four, but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And so while we were dead in our transgressions even, but because of God's great love for us, and he is rich in mercy, and mercy is God's kindness that we don't deserve. And because of God's grace, God's unconditional love, it is by grace that we are saved. And because of God's love, we are somebody. Because of God's love, we now have power. Because of God's love, we can now move forward in peace and love and joy. Here it is, verse six. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. In other words, God has lifted us up into the heavenly places with Christ Jesus himself. Therefore, sin cannot dominate us because we are now in Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are made new. 
our forefathers and mothers, when they met the Lord, they didn't have the kind of theological education that we have, but they said, um, it's been a great change since I've been changed. It's been a great change since I've been born. They would say, I looked at my hands and they look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. It's been a great change since I've been born. The way I used to walk, I don't walk anymore. The way I should talk, I don't talk anymore. I want to just look at that again. But, ah, uh, somebody said, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, Christ called us to life. It is by grace we are saved. Verse eight, and I'm coming to closure now. We're not saved by works. We're not saved because we're kind. We're not saved because people think well of us, but we're saved by the grace of God. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. We thank God for his gift. I know that we were excited to get Valentine's Day gifts. I mean, I thank you for every piece of chocolate, every card, every love gift. I understand, but that won't save you. But the greatest gift that we can be given and has already been given us is the gift of God's grace through faith that saves us. What is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, but one that comes to God must believe that he is, that he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. Not by works, so that no one can boast. You can't work hard enough. You can be the president. You can be the pastor. You can be an apostle. You can be a director. You can be a manager. That won't save you. But we're saved by the grace of God through faith. Now we work because we are saved, but our works won't save us. But because we are saved, we're going to do the right thing. Let me close now. He says, for we are God's handiworks. Psalm 8, what is man that God is mindful of him? He's made him a little lower than angels and crowned him with glory and honor. We are the crowning joy of God's creation, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has saved us so that we can make a difference. God bless you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, some of you came on while I was on. Good to see Carmen. How are you, Carmen? Joan, good to see you. Angela Thornton, good to see you. Um, Sister Marva Harding, Sister Ruby Ramsey, Sarita Bryan, good to see Sister Elizabeth King, Deborah Ward, good to see so many. Thank you for being with me today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that it gives birth as we yet try to understand it. We give you thanks. Thank you, O oh God, for this time of being able to meet with you. And we can say, like our fathers and mothers, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now, God, I pray that you bless each person in the sound of my voice. You know, every need and every concern that we have. So where there's sickness, oh God, be a doctor. Where there's despair, oh God, be our hope. Where there's hate, oh God, help us to show that love is the way. Thank you, oh God, for your great love and your mercy that you saved us and you called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We thank you, we praise you, we adore you, and we give you glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. All right, let's receive the benediction, and I'll look to see you tomorrow at the same time. We'll continue with the book of Ephesians. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out and you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. I'll look to see you on tomorrow at the same time. Don't forget to meet us for worship on Sunday at 1045.